Hello, pen people. This is JK Pens, and I'm here with a short video introducing a series that I'm going to be doing in the coming days and weeks. A series focused on inexpensive demonstrator fountain pens. Uh, my interest in this topic was piqued when I realized I have a lot of inks that don't match any of the pens I own, and I'm a little bit obsessive about pen and ink matching. Clear demonstrators are really nice because, of course, they can match any ink and they can show it off. Obviously, if you have a lot of inks you want to play with, um, you can't always be using um, like a nice, uh, nicer, more expensive demonstrator like this uh, Pelican M205, which runs, you know, well over $100. Um, so I was like, well, what's out there in the budget price range? Um, and I found a lot. Uh, a couple of these I was already familiar with, many I was not. So I'm going to quickly just talk about um, my goals and uh, I'll introduce each of the pens and then I'm going to do a separate short video for each pen and then a wrap up video where I give you my opinions and declare winners in a few different categories. Okay. Um, before I begin, um, it's interesting to note that a demonstrator, I think this uh, Twisby Go is a good example, um, originally meant a pen that was either cut away or I guess transparent so you could see the workings of the filling mechanism. Okay. M modern usage really just means a see-through pen, uh, whether or not it's interesting to demonstrate. Like a, you know, a pen that uh, is using a converter, I don't know that that's that interesting to demonstrate. And certainly like a pen with a cartridge in it, that's about the least interesting thing you could show. Um, the other thing I've noticed is that sometimes demonstrator means clear. All of these are clear, transparent, whatever you want to call it, no color. But I've also seen just see-through pens in general called demonstrators. Anyways, for the purposes of this, I am restricting myself to pens that are clear that you will be able to see the ink in. Um, and so they either have to be uh, uh, eyedropper or uh, have a piston or a vacuum fill or whatever the weird Twisby thing is. I guess it's a kind of vacuum um, or use a converter, uh, but not cartridge pens because I want to be able to show off um, ink. Okay, so let me give you a quick rundown uh, sort of in general increasing price order of the pens. Not exactly because some of the Chinese pens in particular can be much cheaper if you buy them from China than from a retailer in the U.S. Um, but I'm just going to go through them kind of quickly here. And then, like I said, we'll do a video on each one. So first up is the uh, Platinum Preppy, uh, a very well-known and well-respected pen. Uh, one I had never heard of before, but I found on Jet Pens. So it's sort of, you know, Preppy-esque, but in different shapes. So maybe not Preppy-esque, maybe that's not fair. Is the Monami Olika. Okay. Um, so that'll be an interesting one to try. Also, uh, you know, definitely sub $10. I think it was around five. I'll, uh, when I do each pen, I'll give you the source I got it from, and then we'll look at it in more detail. We have a pair of, um, sort of Twisby eco inspired pens here. This is the, uh, Wingsung 3008. And then this is a very suspicious looking pen. Look at that finial, uh, and the piston knob. This is a Lanbito 3059. So this is a random uh, Chinese pen. And again, I'll be curious to see what this is like. Uh, here's another well-known veteran pen. This is the only one of these that's not brand new. All of these I purchased for the video, except this is my own personal pilot Kakuno. So you can see it's already inked. Um, and so we'll include that one in the lineup. And here's a somewhat well-known pen, a Jinhao 992. Uh, Jinhao 992 is um, <clears throat> suspiciously similar to um, the Sailor uh, 1911 um, and has a reputation for not being eyedropperable without work because of this uh, plastic bit at the end. So we'll probably do that one with a converter. Okay, now we're getting up into slightly more expensive pens. This is quite beefy Chinese pen um, called the Paili 013, and it's the only uh, vacuum filler in the lineup, so um, unless you count the Twisby Go. So it'll be interesting to see how that is. Yeah, and so speaking of the Twisby Go, this is the Twisby Go with its uh, unusual push-button uh, spring-loaded thumb mechanism. Then we have 
<clears throat> our only American entry, the Noodler's Nib Creeper. Noodler's has a number of low-end pens. Um, I chose this one because it was, in fact, the cheapest. Um, and it does have a somewhat funky, uh, there you go, uh, piston mechanism. So I'll be interested to see uh, what that one is like. And then we have two um, on the nicer end of the spectrum, the uh, Pen BBS 266, which I think is sometimes also, oops, 266, yeah, which is sometimes also the 308. Um, a very nice um, uh, cartridge converter pen, but I think it would eyedropper just fine. And then this little fella is the Moonman Wonkai Mini, um, which has a nice fat barrel. So I think that'll be fun for showing off the ink. And you can hear my kids screaming in the background, as is so often the case. One of these years, I'd like to have a little quiet recording studio. But for now, I have to deal with this. Okay, so that's the intro. We will be uh, taking a look through each of these pens, uh, a short video on each, and then like I said, a wrap up. And then at the end of the whole series, uh, probably as part of the wrap up video, I'll be doing a giveaway because honestly, I don't need all of these. So I will, <laughs> there's a kid barging in and making noise. Anyways, I uh, hope you're looking forward to this series. I am uh, to try out all these uh, fun pens and uh, stay safe, be well, and I'll see you soon. Bye.